Hi everyone, many thanks for coming to this event today. Um, so, as you probably know already, my name is Carmen and together with Regine, we have curated uh, the exhibition that is uh, now running at NIM, Sea Blackness. And also we have put together a series of uh, events around it, including this seminar, a curators in conversation that will take place tomorrow at 11 and a film screening next Wednesday. 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 I don't remember the time, but next Wednesday. Uh, so uh, during the seminar, well, the seminar will last for about two hours. Uh, Regine will be introducing the speakers after me, and each speaker will have a, around 20, 25, a slot of 20, 25 minutes, and then we will move into the uh, uh, Q&A and discussion uh, time. If you have any questions, we recommend that you write them down for the uh, Q&A time. Uh, during this seminar, we will be exploring and discussing uh, artistic research and scientific responses to issues related to the Mediterranean, including its, uh, uh, the state of uh, coastal and marine ecosystems uh, on a, from a wider perspective and also a local perspective. And we'll be, we will be also talking about the importance of developing uh, new narratives and interdisciplinary networks of exchange around the diversity of seeds and also topics related to memory and the uh, ecology and rela relationship of uh, living systems. Uh, the uh, seminar is part of uh, Sea Blackness and the exhibition Sea Blackness is part of a much uh, wider initiative uh, called a Sea Change, which is a cooperation, um, um, a cooperation <laughs> between three other European institutions. Uh, the exhibition will be on until the 22nd of October, so we hope you can come and see it. Um. Yes, so I'm Regine, and I'm a blogger and an art critic. Uh, and I need to start with a very good sad news because uh, Giovanna Heather, who was supposed to speak uh, with us today, she cannot be here because of uh, a family emergency. Um, but yet we have the pleasure to welcome uh, uh, Haralem Cox Teopendu. Uh, I still cannot believe he accepted our, our invitation to, to be here with us today. So I know everybody knows who he is, but just few more of me, I pretend to don't. Uh, Haralem Cox, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, there are some sounds that I cannot pronounce. Uh, that's something we have when we speak French, it's kind of curved. Anyway. Mr. Theopen II is the head of the Green Party in Cyprus. He is the chair of the Parliament Parliamentary Committee on the Environment and he's a member of the Cyprus Parliament since 2016. He studied uh, electrical engineering at uh, City University of London. In 1986, he became a lecturer at the Higher Technological Institute in Cyprus. In 2013, he became a lecturer at the Department of Environmental Science and Technology at uh, the Cyprus University of Technology. And during all that time, he was also an environmental um, activist. Now, there is a number of videos of Mr. Theopentu online. Two of them I found in English, well, he found them in English. They were very good, so I have very high expectations regarding this presentation. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. It's great to be back in Limassol. Um, I'm going to talk for about 20 minutes about what lies beneath. Um, the focus, of course, is the Mediterranean area here. Um, this is our beloved Mediterranean. Please note that for Cyprus, if you look at Cyprus, we don't have any of the surrounding countries within the European Union. And that means a lot because EU countries, which are from here onwards to the north, they have rules and regulations about management of waste and how you behave and what you do. If you look at 
the, north, the southern part of the Mediterranean, as well as all around Cyprus, these countries are not within the European Union. And these are countries that you simply beg them to do proper management of their waste and not to throw stuff in the sea. But this is a huge uh, problem that we face. And these are the countries around us. You have Turkey on top. Uh, somewhere above us is where they, will, they are building now in AQU the nuclear, the nuclear power plant. And we are very worried about nuclear waste that would be dumped into the sea, which is quite common for many of the nuclear power stations. We have war torn Syria. You have Lebanon, Israel, Egypt. And one very important canal that is messing up the Mediterranean nowadays is the Suez Canal that goes through here. And I'm, I am mentioning Suez Canal because through it, we get invasive species coming into the Mediterranean and it's causing a lot of problems, especially in our waters. Where we have very aggressive species that reach the Cyprus and they're actually killing uh, a lot of species in the waters. So this is the situation with, uh, with the Mediterranean uh, uh, waters. And just to show you one of the huge problems that we face, uh, last night I was doing this presentation, and these are the ships that are now present in the Mediterranean. Just to give you, last night, <laughs> this is the, the picture how it was last night. At any given time, we have more than 300 ships. Now, ships are regulated, no matter whether you are within EU or, or not, they are regulated by the International Maritime Organization. And everything we do within EU uh, is in agreement with IMO so, so that everything applies everywhere. Not many ships, don't expect that in our area here, all these ships will actually follow the rules and regulations of the IMO. And we have a lot of ships that go around like that. And this is one of the problems that we face. This is a dead cow that was washed in the waters of Akamas. Akamas, for Cyprus, is the east uh, coast. Uh, sorry, the west. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So this is what we found one day there. We, if you walk along the coastline of the Agamas, uh, you will find all sorts of stuff. And this is another picture. This is the most polluted beach I have ever seen in Cyprus. These are all these plastics, all of it, all this white stuff that you see is waste. And I, I talk to people, how come we have so many pieces of plastic and how come we get dead animals uh, beached on the waters in Agamas? And they were telling me that many of the ships that move around Cyprus in the Arab countries, many of these ships, they are simple structure ships. They have their uh, loads in open decks and they cover them with plastic nylon sheets. So during the, the sea voyage, if there is any wind or whatever, all these plastic covers will actually end up in the waters. If anything dies or whatever they carry, they simply dump it into the sea. And you'll never know what you'll find in the waters of, in the coastline of Agamas. It's actually um, very scary. Uh, I remember uh, we found, and I remember two occasions where we found human remains. And 
Also, uh, some years ago, we had huge barrels full of chemicals that were washed ashore. So this is pictures of what is Kapteni, and this is what um, is known about the Mediterranean. It's one of the seas that is most affected by marine plastic pollution. Uh, we don't want anyone to tell us, we know this. Uh, when you go there, you, you find this. And we have a lot of plastics, and one of the issues that a lot of people are making fun of is that you'll find a lot of single-use plastics. Single-use plastics are regulated by the European Union. We have the regulation that came into force in 2020, and we have nine items that are regulated, and there is a timeline for additional items to be uh, restricted. Uh, and I'm talking about single-use plastics, uh, like, like, for instance, uh, straws and stuff like that. So this is the situation with regards to what is happening all around us. And it is something that we need to find a solution. I remember when I was at the, uh, when I was a lecturer at the Cyprus Technical University here in Limassol, uh, I was approached by the Lebanese government. They wanted advice on how to manage their waste quickly. They wanted a very quick solution. And um, what they do, I think they still do it, perhaps not as much as they used to, but what they do is they collect the waste from the houses, they take it to the beach, and they dump it into the waters. This is the reason why you get all this waste being collected on the shores in Cyprus. They need support. They need, we need to find a way uh, to help them do this. So enough blaming our neighbors. Let's have a look at what do we do. This is a drain pipe. In Baralimni, this is east coast of Cyprus, where we have a lot of tourism. This is a tourist beach. Here is the sand, the umbrellas, and everything. And here you get this sewer coming out. OK? Why? Because all the sewers in coastal cities in Cyprus, uh, they drive all the uh, rainwater into the sea. And if you want to see what is happening in Limassol, let me show you this. Ah, sorry, this is in, um, in Oroklini. Uh, they had this very fancy walkway, and there is a bridge and everything. We got awards because of that, but underneath it, they drive the um, rainwaters into the sea. It's a mess, actually, and it's full of mosquitoes during the summer. Everybody is... Um, complaining about all this, and this ends up in the sea. Okay, why? Because some government department decided that it would be a clever idea to collect all the water from the area and dump it into the sea, like we normally do in Cyprus. And let's come to Limassol. This is the, these are some pictures that I was showing to my students when I was doing coastal management. Um, you, you recognize this. This is before they actually closed it, okay? Here, be, before they put the boards on top, you see the pipes, okay? And here are the rainwater drains. This is the drainage system. This is where all the waters from the streets, the rainwater, the rainwater falls on the streets, gets into the pipes underneath, and is driven to the sea. And this is, I put my mobile in, the, um, in there, and this is what you see underneath. Mostly uh, packaging, and it seems that people in Liverpool love chips. And this, next time you get water, uh, uh, rain water coming in, they will actually end up in the sea. And some of it you can see there, depending on the time, 
that you go there. There, it comes out and you see things among the rocks. But that, as I was walking, taking the pictures along the beach, somebody approached me and he said to me, I was there. And he said to me, I was walking there. He said to me, you know, uh, I saw you taking pictures, can you tell me why? And I explained that it was for my students. And he said, this place, every time you walk by, certain days of the week, it smells badly. Okay? And I went to investigate. And this is the municipal zoo of Limassol. And when it rains, all the rainwater, yes, I know, all the rainwater is taken into these pipes and it comes here. And this is where I was standing. And I was trying to find out why does it smell so bad. It's because they drive all these trains into the water. And it's not only that. This is near the old Limassol port. You see all this waste because the bins are full. If you really care, you have to design to be efficient. You have to design to protect the sea and the coast. You don't just do it and you leave and you hope that everything is okay. You have to see the consequences and follow up of what you have done. And let's see the other pressures on marine life. What do you do with rivers? We know very well that a lot of the waste that ends up in the sea is actually waste that people dump into the river. Here in Limassol, we had a very big scare uh, a few years back because some of the municipalities, they were dumping their waste into the river, uh, gurris, and when the waters came down in one winter, they actually uh, pushed forward all this waste and we, we were trying to put a block in order not for the waste to reach the sea. But if you continue walking up the, the beach where I, I was showing you before, there is a big hotel here, and this is the river that comes from up in the mountains. And I went there the day it rained, and this is what you see there, and this is on the river bed. Uh, you see all these plastics and all this waste uh, that is collected here. So imagine what actually ends up in the sea. And this is not only there, it's also here in Limassol, uh, this is the area between the city and the marina. Um, I, I keep forgetting this. And one thing that I thought not to be done, but unfortunately we lost, this is the new port. And they built a very big network system to collect rainwater uh, north of Limassol. Uh, high end, uh, high end and they drive all these waters through these pipes and they dump it into the sea, here, sorry. And it goes into the sea with all sorts of, and I went there with my students and I have some pictures. This is how big uh, the tunnel is. They covered it and it goes into the sea. And nobody knows what type of, there is no traps to trap uh, waste in any ways that would go there. This is in Paphos. There are two hotels that were actually throwing the sewers, the sewage, I should say, they, in, into hidden uh, pipes. Here, underneath this, you see the, all these rocks, you see the water coming out. And somebody called me, I went there, they're actually, I, I discovered that they had pipes there, and there is another set of pipes there. That's why you see this green stuff. This is absolutely wrong. And this is 
something very familiar to all the people that live in Silimassol. Certain days of the year, certain times, I should say, you see all this sewage floating in the waters, and a lot of people actually face the problems there. And there is a mystery where all this comes from. Uh, we pay around 400,000 euros every year for a ship to go around, for a boat to go around and collect this, but they never, nobody was interested to pay somebody to find out where this pollution comes from. We pay to clean it, but we don't pay to discover the source. Another source of waste is this. This is a boat of coastal tourism. All these people, they eat, they drink, and there are toilets on board. So the million dollar question is, where do they flush this? And this, another issue, marinas. Let's say I have uh, my boat there. I have my boat there and I need to empty the switch of the boat. What will I do? The terms and conditions of the marinas include sewage collection. So you pump the sewage from a boat on land and you drive it into the sewage system. So this is the Libasol Marina. as an example of the worries that we have. And this is the marina in Ayanaba. See, the point is that in every place where you have yachts, big boats like this, you have to have a, a system that will actually pump the switch out of the boat whenever the owner wants to do that. Another difficulty with uh, the water is what do we do in uh, coastal waters. Here is in Baralimni, this is a famous picture. The mayor, without asking anybody, decided to actually go down and improve the beach. The problem with that, with that image, is that all this mud that you see here went into the sea. And mud behaves completely different compared to sand. Sand is heavy and it sits down. If you throw mud into the water, gravel into the water, the gravel particles are very small and they can raise up again. So every time you have a, a few waves, the area there actually gets, um, you, 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 the waters are not clear. It will take years for this to clear. And you have to be very careful what you do with uh, heavy equipment and changing the beach like that. And we have done this in many places. Rodaras is not just the one. We have a huge tunnel that was dug up in Ayanapa as well, where there is this big developer that was advertising his uh, houses that he was selling, um, that they are on the beach, but the houses were not on the beach. They had a distance from the beach. So he was advertising this because what he did, he actually got heavy equipment, he dug up the ground, and he brought the water to the apartments. And now they have a beach. And this is what we went through the 10 years of the previous government that everything was okay. If it's to make money, it was okay. There was an economic reason to do it, and it was okay. It was the worst years with regards to the environment uh, that we ever had here on the island. I tried to show you the pressures uh, on the Mediterranean Sea. Um, okay, my time is up, but if you have any questions, uh, I will be glad to answer this later on. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.